Greetings, my drinking buddies. So today we're going to test and find out if you can make aged tequila at home, if it's gonna be worth it, if it tastes good, and see how it stacks up against some other types of distilled agave. Um, and then we're gonna make a cocktail out of our fake stuff and see how that tastes. I'm your drinking buddy. buddies so I'm joined by my buddy Duncan here and we're gonna taste my fake uh, aged tequila against an añejo as well as a mezcal and see how it stacks up against them and uh, uh, you know what uh, you and I drink a lot of whiskey we're not that big into tequilas um, not really tequila no gin no rum mostly whiskey yeah bourbon especially yeah yeah and I'm kind of the same way I mean I you know I taste all kinds of stuff but the thing I'm the most comfortable with talking about is whiskey, especially bourbon or scotch for me. Um, I, you know, I like tequila, but I don't know that much about the flavors and the different complexities that are involved in tequila. So I thought it'd be a good idea to invite you because you don't either. Yep. And uh, uh, we can kind of have a uh, unbiased opinion of this as we go through. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like the Anejo most because that one's at least aged. Yeah. You know, being a bourbon fan, I feel like this one I'm going to like the most. I've already tried the Mezcal, but I, have not, I haven't tried either one of these. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what you think of the Mezcal and what I think of these two. Yeah. I have not had the two on the outside. I've had the Anejo before. Um, but, you know, what I'm kind of thinking is the two-week process that was involved in aging this uh, when you when you uh, uh, have a glass of water and a, a lemon or a lime sits in it for too long and you go to taste it and it's just like filled with that oversaturation of lemon or lime flavor, uh, you know, after only being in the cup for a few minutes, whereas you could make a pitcher with lemons and limes in it and that process would, you could leave that in your fridge for days. Um, and uh, I think that's the same sort of thing going on here with this, with this, you know, spiral that I put in here. It, the, the short term, it's just got so many contact points on that spiral and it's being completely submerged in there. It just gets so much more flavor right away. At least that's what I'm being told. So the only way to find out is to taste it. So so basically putting that thing in the tequila is like it's being in a barrel for yeah, how it's, long? It's the equivalent 14 days of it being in the bottle is the equivalent of it being in the barrel for a year. Interesting. According to the packaging. <laughs> so can... let's give it a taste. Let's... Let's Why not? Taste Let's it try out. it. So this is the fake, fake añejo. If it's not good, we're gonna write Amazon a bad review. Yes. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm is right. It it certainly doesn't taste like eight dollar tequila. It which doesn't is what taste the like bottles, tequila at all. The bottle started out as. It's pretty smooth. It's sweet. It does not have that like. Because tequila to me has this nasty kind of aftertaste in my throat, but this stuff doesn't doesn't seem like it has that. It mm. has removed it. I know what you're talking about. The tequila has a, a cheap tequila at least has that astringent aftertaste. Yeah, and that's been removed by aging huh. for sure. You got lucky on this one, Amazon. Um, yeah, uh, it's pretty good. It's like not it's, bad. It tastes I mean, like it. It tastes like. Not necessarily like an añejo. It tastes more like a good reposado. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, when you're aging tequila, a reposado is under a year, an añejo is over a year, and an extra añejo, which is what we're about to taste, is aged for at least three years. So this should taste more like a bourbon uh, as far as the complexity and the... And the, the, the uh, Shouldn't taste like a bourbon, but it'll, it'll, it'll have the complexity of a bourbon from being sitting in the barrel for three years. So yeah, let's, let's, let's give it a taste. One. Cheers. Wow, that's smoky, smooth. smooth, really smoky. Yeah, sweet. It's got a syrupy mm. quality to it. Um, that's this one we're having now is the manic extra añejo. Um, 
This one's aged in uh, bourbon mm. barrel, so it does it does come with a little. It's bit aged of, in a bourbon barrel. Yeah. Hmm. Um, the bourbon barrels are very sought after. Uh, once a bourbon barrel has been used, it can no longer be used to make bourbon. Bourbon has to be used in new charred oak barrels and only new charred oak barrels. So Canada, Scotland, Ireland, uh, uh, you know, everywhere in the world buys up those bourbon barrels to age their products in because those bourbon barrels have a great flavor to them and they're known for, for being able to add a lot of complexity to a scotch or a brandy or a tequila in this case. Yeah, because... Uh... Glenn Fittick even has a, they put their 12 year old uh, scotch in a bourbon barrel for two more years, making it 14 years aged. So it kind of gets those, those notes of that bourbon barrel inside with the scotch mm -hmm. and that stuff's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. But you can definitely tell this one has a lot more going on than this one. It's got more complexity to it, for this sure. This one's kind of more of like a, maybe something you'd use in a margarita. Yeah. And this is something you would definitely sip. Like how it is like this, I can't see having it another way. Maybe with some ice, I don't know. Yeah, it, but, uh, I've actually not drank it any other way other than neat, and then I used it as a float in a drink in a previous beverage, or previous episode. But other than that, I don't think that you would, you would ruin this if you used it in a yeah, margarita. It's just got too much complex flavor. What is the price it, of this, this tequila? It was about 50. So yeah, yeah that's something, yeah, that's, that's yeah. in that price range where you don't really yeah. want to mix it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, let's try the mezcal. And mezcals are something that I'm not too familiar with. Um, I've had a couple that I've liked. I've had a couple on Yehos that were real good too, aged as well. Uh, but I don't know if I've ever had a silver. And you brought over the Dos Hombres Mezcal, and this is made by... It's made by the two actors that were in the show, Breaking Bad, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul. So when the show ended, they wanted to do a project together, and they knew they weren't going to be able to do a show or a movie because um, they had different schedules going on. So they thought, hey, let's make a Mezcal, and they 100%, as far as everything I've known about it, went through and they did the process of trying it and making it and doing all that. Their names are on the bottle. So that means they are a distiller of it. That's really awesome. Yeah, it's a numbered bottle and everything. So very limited batch, which is really cool. So let's give that one. Ooh, that is smoky. Yeah, Oh, that's that really is smoky. smoky. I love that. But this is another one I've only had Let's neat. See? Mesquite? I yeah, mesquite. you can definitely tell the mesquite's in there. That's for sure. Do they use mesquite? I was just um, saying I taste mesquite. I know they get the agave from a certain mountain region. It's only from this certain mountain region where they get the agave from. So it might just be where it's grown, the... the, the I don't I, know. Or the process at which they cook yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, um, hmm. not nearly as sweet as the other hmm. two. Not really sweet at all. But it's complex considering it's unaged. It's very yeah. complex. I'm pretty sure mezcals aren't aged. Well, some are, um, but this one is clear. Yeah. So I would say that it wouldn't be aged unless it's aged for a short time. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's very complex, very smoky. Um. So, how does my fake añejo that? Cost thirteen dollars a bottle. Stack up against two fifty dollar bottles. This was about fifty, right? Yeah, about yeah. 60, sixty, something like that. If right. I so right. about a fifty and about so. a sixty. So we have thirteen, we have fifty, 15 and, and we have sixty. So Which, I mean, if you had these just sitting out, like at a party for guests, you know, and everything, they would probably enjoy all three. I mean, yeah. I feel like that. You know, maybe this one you would. This might actually be the smoothest of the three. Like yeah, the easiest this is definitely the smoothest. Down. So and I wonder if it that's... would lend itself to do things like tequila shots or margaritas really well because of how smooth it is. Yeah. I'm really curious to see what this would taste like without this, the, what is it called? The stive? The, the, um, the spiral, the, the spiral, thing. spiral. I'm curious what this tequila would it's taste terrible. like. <laughs> yeah, it probably is because it's an $8 <laughs> it's, bottle. It's an $8, so $8 it's... bottle of tequila. It's pretty bad. It's not, it's not anything special. No, um, but this does make it, I mean... As far as I'm concerned, this does taste like it is different than just a regular tequila. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can tell you if I was drinking this, uh, you know, super cheap bottle of tequila, you know, by mm. itself, now I just without any ice or on the rocks or anything like that, him and mm. I would both be, Ugh. you know, it's just not something that would be mm. sippable, but this is very sippable. So I got to admit, Amazon, 
It's a buy. I'm going to try it on rum next, I think, or on a cocktail. So why don't you guys let me know in the comments what you think I should use it in. Um, I was either going to make up a batch of Manhattans and put the spiral in there, or I was going to buy a bottle of rum and try it in there. I'm not very familiar with, with uh, aged rums. You know, as an American, yeah. they're just not something you can go to the grocery store and buy. Whereas you can get a nice scotch, you can get a nice aged bourbon. Uh, but an aged rum is not something that you can just get at a grocery store. So we're just not as familiar with them. And rum's typically something you don't sip on, like yeah. drinking it neat. Rum's something you obviously mix with Coke or yeah. Yeah, whatever and I, else. I know there's a big culture of people who love aged rums and drink them just like this. So, Interesting. So it would be it would be for sure interesting to try uh, aging the you know the cheapest rum I can find in a bottle just like this. I'm sure it would turn out fine because the tequila did, well. and I'm not a fan of tequila, as you know. And this is something I don't know if I would drink a whole bottle of it, but drinking this is good. I mean, this stuff is really good too. This this extra now, so yeah, I think they're both winners, all three of them for sure. All three are winners. And uh, you can't beat 13 bucks. Yeah, 13 bucks in the spiral or the... Oh, yeah, it was $8 for the bottle and $5 for the spiral. So your, so. you know, $13 bottle, I mean, it's definitely better than... That's probably better than if you would spend $20 on a bottle of just regular yeah, you know, I actually, Jose Cuervo or so, something. So what I'm comparing it to in my mind is something like Cuervo Tradicional, which is a Reposado, or like uh, Hornitos, which is another oh, yeah. Reposado. That's and, a good comparison. Uh, I actually, I mean, I don't have it back to back, but I feel like this is better than either of those. Mm -hmm. And I like both of those. Hmm. Well, it's a buy. All right, drinking buddies, let's use this fake Añejo to make a cocktail. Sounds good to me. So uh, we're going to make the Johnny Silverhand. Now, this is a cocktail from the video game... Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077. And I have a PlayStation 4, just in case someone from somehow is watching this. I have a PlayStation 4. Yeah, so if you need to give a copy away for making a cocktail from your game, he's your man. Uh, so, in the game, Keanu Reeves' character, I believe, haunts the main character. He's like a ghost that haunts him. And they go to a bar uh, where every cocktail is named after somebody dead and they order the Johnny Silverhand. And the Johnny Silverhand is an onion, or a tequila old fashioned with a sp splash of cerveza and a chili garnish. So we're gonna make that. We don't have an exact recipe. In fact, when she pours it out in the video game, it just kind of looks like she mixes up nothing and it pours it out. But we're gonna, we're gonna guesstimate on this and we're gonna try to make it really good. So I'm gonna make two of them, so we're gonna double the recipe. But if you were making this at home, you'd use two ounces of your Tequila, we're using our fake. I'm gonna double it, so I'm going four ounces since we're making two. So the standard recipe would be two ounces of tequila and a half ounce of simple syrup. But we're gonna do a full ounce. So we have a one ounce of simple syrup. If you're playing along at home, half ounce per cocktail. And then we're gonna do some bitters. And I'm gonna do a lot of bitters because we're making two cocktails here. I did six. Let's shake this up. anticlimactic when it takes this long to pour. <laughs> All right, let's grab our garnish. So I have magically retrieved our uh, garnish from the freezer and it is a jalapeno that I went ahead and roasted in the oven. And next we're going to do a splash of cerveza. So I have some Negro Modelo here. All right, let's give these a taste. I'm your drinking buddy. All right, so the Johnny Silverhand. It's 
pretty darn good old fashioned. Mm. It basically tastes like an old fashioned with tequila. Yeah, it kind of tastes exactly how you'd expect it to. Sweet. But I'm getting a little, little bit of heat from the spice, yeah. from, the, from the garnish, which is nice. But nothing su substantial. No, it's not overpowering at all. You can definitely tell there's tequila in there. Yeah. I kind of like stirring it with the jalapeno because you get a little bit of heat. But yeah, I get a little bit of a, I get a little bit of a, a mesquite flavor out of it. I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah. Sweet, spicy, tasty, goes down smooth. Not much more you can ask for when it comes to a uh, cocktail. The Johnny Silverhand. All right, guys, we're doing one more cocktail. Now this is the pineapple incident, and this is a cocktail I made on another channel, uh, the Weekly Butt Burn. So um, I'd like to invite you guys to go check out their channel. They got some pretty funny content. Um, they do mostly hot sauce reviews and, and uh, hot food challenges, and they do a lot of skits that are pretty funny. And so this is one that I made for their channel. To get the recipe, uh, the link is in the description. Uh, but yeah, the pineapple incident. It's pretty spicy. I'm kind of scared to try this, but let's give it a try. Oh, you can already smell the peppers in that. Oh yeah, that is spicy. I guess I should. Hmm. That is really good. Well, you can definitely taste the spice in it. That is for sure. It doesn't taste like there's habaneros yet. Um, it just tastes really spicy and sweet. Hmm. I think that means I did my job. That is something <laughs> I could drink. That yeah. is delicious. It's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Duncan, for coming on the channel. It was fun. Um, Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And tell your friends. And hit that alarm bell so you get notifications. And also, Wolf, and Fax, and... Um, tweet and Instagram and Facebook and, and wolf. Yeah. If you wolf, wolf it. Yeah. Wolf it for sure. Um, thanks for watching.